second part of the series of short online self-paced retreat for the busy one. I hope that you had a really good experience with the first set of reflections. And in this next section, what we're going to do is deepen that reflection. Why is that important? You know, in my life coaching practice, I've really seen that those who allow themselves time to reflect are the ones who have a better time realizing things and therefore learning from whatever it is that they experience. They're the ones who really benefit from whatever it is that comes their way. And when we talk about reflection, reflection really brings learning to our life, right? Practicing reflective activities helps us find meaning in a lesson and make connections between educational experiences and real life situations. So it increases our insight and creates pathways to future learning. This realization is best done when we are in the quiet of our lives, when we can be perfectly honest with ourselves. As with the first deck that I shared, let's start with making sure that wherever we are in our house or wherever you are in this world, you have a very comfortable environment around you and that you've got a few of these things checked off. When I went on the three-day retreat that inspired me to create this series, I realized that I could have prepared a little bit better. And that's why I'm sharing with you this list now. So once you've gathered all of the materials and ensure that you're in a very comfortable environment, I now ask you to start breathing deeply, relaxing yourself, putting yourself at peace and really in the presence of God. Once you find that happy moment and you're ready to move on, we can work on this activity. When it comes to reflection, after really looking at the prayer that Jesus taught us, I want us to see what the Holy Spirit is letting us know or telling us based on the following questions that I have prepared for you today. When I was in college, I remember my professor telling me that inspiration is the breath of God through the Holy Spirit. And every inspiration that leads you to good is God speaking to you. In my life coaching career, I always encourage my clients to really live their own journey, trust their own journey. There is always a reason why you're in the situation you're in. God is near. He is that real in our life. And I invite you now to look at the following questions and see how you would answer them honestly. Do I take the time to listen for God's voice? When we go and decide on something, especially when we're thinking of something, when we're worried about something, what is God telling us? How do we schedule our time with God? Do I face family, profession, social concerns with God's will for me? There is one way of making you know, of um, claiming that things are, are, are good, right, for us, because it's really showing God the faith that we have. But we should also spend time to seek what it is that he is telling us, what his will is for our lives. There is one, um, I think she's a 
she's a, a social worker, you know, a, a friend of the family. And, and in her way of feeding children, helping others, her reliance on that, on that will is so great that in her experience, she's realized that every time, every time it's God's will, nothing can hold her back. But once she starts doing things that she thinks is necessary or that she thinks should be done, but what did not come from divine inspiration, usually it's pride, usually it's vanity, then things get a little bit messy. When do we listen to God's voice in our lives? How often do I decide on the side of holiness in order to please God? Where is your integrity? When you are alone and nobody is looking and you think nobody is looking, when do you choose holiness? How much do you choose holiness? How much do I value prayer and do I pray often enough? What is often? Only you can decide. But I really encourage at least the daily rosary and the three o'clock chaplet of divine mercy. Those are game changers. I've had real experiences in my, my life of not just healing physically, but spiritual healing and changes in their demeanor and in their lives, real conversions through the power of those prayers. Next is, do I examine my conscience every evening with sincerity and contrition? How often do you examine your conscience? Do you sweep things under the rug, hoping that you'll just forget? Do I go to confession, the sacrament of joy, humbly and often enough? At least once a month, I think, is good. Some go every other week. But maybe once a year, although that is the bare minimum, I think that's pushing it. Because how do you remember everything, right? Am I concerned with the spiritual and material welfare of all souls? How much do we help others? Who else do I have to forgive in my heart? This sense of forgiveness again. And finally, at least here, what should I change about myself? I invite you to really take the time to answer these questions and know yourself a little bit better. After that, if you want some more reflection or some more information, I'd like you to check out the links that I have shared in this slide. You may pause this to take your time to go through these questions here. And when you're ready, you can just hit play. You know, reflection can be a habit we form, which may also elevate our regular examination of conscience. And it's interesting because a lot of us want peace, but peace, at least real peace, is only really gained when you know that your conscience is clean. So ask for forgiveness from our Father and the resolve to do better. Isn't it interesting that when we go to confession, as part of the prayer, we say, I firmly resolve with the help of your grace to confess my sins and do my penance and amend my life. And these are not just words. You know, if you put this into action, imagine what kind of life you will live. On this particular slide, I am sharing something that I found that was created by Catholic Link 
father, Kyle, shares that you need just three minutes, really. You know, the first minute, remember all your blessings. Be grateful, you know, for the abundance, for anything and everything. Because whatever it is, even if it's bad, you know, God creates good things out of those. In the second minute, remember your sins. Did you tell a lie today? Did you fool somebody? Did you cheat somebody? Look at the Ten Commandments. Check on the sins that you've done. And then finally, on the third minute, Father Kyle recommends focusing on that one thing that you are going to work on the following day to be a better child of God. And as you go through this examination of conscience, you are better prepared now to go to confession when you hear Sunday Mass. I know not all of the churches are open yet, but there is online information on which church you can go for confession. Message me if you need that, okay? Finally, I'd like to share this little prayer. Oh, my divine Lord, I know you are alive today, speaking to me, calling me, and revealing to me your glorious presence. Help me to desire you, and within that desire, to turn to you with all my heart. I love you, my Lord. Help me to love you more. Jesus, I trust in you. Thank you, everyone. It has been another wonderful experience sharing this deck with you. Join me in the third section, in the final section of this short online self-paced retreat. Thank you.